Today we're going to talk about and dive in to Joseph Smith and his first vision, his boasting, and his martyrdom in response to questions that I was asked. Welcome to our weekly Q&A, Sharing Jesus with the Coles Edition. And this is People of the Free Gift, where we ground believers in their identity in Christ and equip them to reach those caught in religion. If you're new to the channel and you like content related to cults and how to share the gospel with them, click that subscribe button so you don't miss any future content. So let's go ahead and jump into the questions I have this week related to my video that I made on the LDS view of Joseph Smith. Thank you guys for all of the input and comments and questions in relation to that video. And I, if you haven't seen it yet, go and check it out. Um, and I have a, a few different videos in a playlist called Mormonism that you can go check out as well. And so uh, the first one here, it was a comment uh, and it gave the definition for martyr, which means to submit. Uh, and it says a person who was killed because of their religious or other beliefs. And then uh, saints, martyrs, and witnesses to the faith and verb killed someone because of their beliefs. She was martyred for her faith. And so um, the claim there is that Joseph Smith fits the uh, definition of a martyr because he was killed for his religious beliefs. And so let's dive into that first. And I mentioned it in that video, but I have to say this. Joseph Smith did not die because of his religious beliefs. If you don't know the events, there was some within the LDS camp who decided that they were going to start a newspaper called the Nauvoo Expositor. And the reason why it was called that is because they were in Nauvoo and they were going to expose some of the things that Joseph Smith had said and done, which they felt he had gone too far and that he was becoming a false prophet. And there was kind of their 95 theses that they were trying to put in the hands of the other LDS people to call the leaders, particularly Joseph, to repentance. Now, before that first issue could even get on the shelves, Joseph had that um, paper and the whole printing press and everything destroyed, which is a federal offense. It is a crime. And so he went to jail for that crime, and he was in the Carthage jail with his brother Hiram. And while he was there at that Carthage jail, there was a band of people that stormed that jail. But prior to them storming the jail, somebody had come in and slipped Hiram and Joseph guns. Okay, They had guns on their possession. When the people came for them, they fired those guns. In fact, they shot other people who had come and attacked them. And then they eventually were killed, shot down themselves. Now, the question is, does that fit the description of a martyr? My submission to you is no. He was in jail because he committed a crime, not for his religious beliefs. He was shot down because people despised him, not for his religious beliefs. Nobody came and said, we call you to recant your beliefs or your claim to be a prophet. In fact, we do not know for sure that these were opposers to the LDS church. There are some who believe that this may well have been people who were within the LDS church who had been fed up with Joseph Smith and thought he had gone too far or they were people from the Masonic influence. In fact, he had, Joseph Smith had on him not just the gun, but the Jupiter talisman that he wore around his neck, and he cried out, and there were witnesses to this, this, um, is there no help for the widow's son? That is a Masonic cry for help, and he was crying that out before he was shot down. Okay, so he was not killed 
because of his religious beliefs, and he was not killed in a religious setting, okay? So I don't personally call, classify him as a martyr. I know that LDS do, but that's partly because they've told the story in a way that, you know, Hiram and Joseph didn't have guns on them, and they didn't shoot anybody, and, you know, they died, you know, just like a lamb to the slaughter is the song that they sing about this event, and it couldn't be further from the truth, okay? So that's my feelings in regards to Joseph Smith and his martyrdom, and so now let's get on to the first vision and so plenty to study here on the first vision accounts. Each individual must study such things for themselves to see if it makes sense. You seem to have the same textbook, anti-Mormon lines, and there doesn't seem to be very much in, in faith in Christ or seeking truth through prayerful study. So I just want you to know that I went to the article that you linked, and I read what it had to say. And I, this might become part of a mini-series in which I dive into each of these sub-points on these different topics that you you talked about because it says you know this is the fair mormon website which these are mormon apologists okay um summary joseph smith claimed that he saw the father and the son in the 1820 has produced a wide variety of criticism. This set of articles addresses the various critical claims related to the first vision. The linked articles below are designed to help readers to see some of the weaknesses that are found in arguments that are made against Joseph Smith's first vision accounts. Some of these arguments are currently being advocated in anti-Mormon literature that is handed out near the Sacred Grove in Palmyra in New York. So just so you know, these are the different subtopics that we might get into later. Criticisms of the first vision accounts criticisms of events leading up to the first vision, criticisms of events occurring after the first vision, doctrinal issues related to the first vision, and primary sources related to Joseph Smith's first vision. Now, if you have to explain all of those things, don't you think that there might be a problem with the accuracy or historical veracity of the accounts? If you have multiple different doctrines if doctrinal issues, you have multi multiple different historical issues, if you have multiple different interpretations of what has happened and actually several different accounts of what actually took place, don't you think that that is evidence that... Um, so he goes on to uh, give a quote. God touched his eyes with his finger and said, Joseph, this is my beloved son, hear him. As soon as the Lord had touched his eyes with his finger, he immediately saw the Savior. After a meeting, a few of us questioned him about the matter, and he told us at the bottom of the meeting house steps that he was in the house of Father Smith in Kirtland when Joseph made this declaration, and that Joseph, while speaking of it, put his finger to his right eye, suiting the action with the words, so as to illustrate at the same time, impress the occurrence on the minds of those unto whom he was speaking. This is from the diary of Charles Lowell Walker, and it was recorded this February 2nd, 1893. Do you realize that the first vision account was supposed to have occurred in 1820? This is not good, reliable information to know what happened. This is not firsthand anything, okay? This is, um, nobody, in fact, heard anything of the first vision uh, until, like, years later, like 30 years later, okay? When the church started talking about it and Joseph started changing his, changing his theology about God. In fact, most people refer to the first vision as the vision of Moroni involving the golden plates, Okay, so now let's get into the boasting, and uh, this is a possible series as well. Was Joseph Smith boasting, again from the anti-Mormon playbook, there's actually 50 questions or more that has been put out by anti-Mormons. Here is something to read on this one question. Hopefully anyone who watches this video will put some time into reading them, and then with an open mind decided for themselves. Again, I went to the topic. Here's the subtopics that we can jump into later. Um, question, is the quote of Joseph Smith's boasting of keeping the church intact accurate? Absolutely, it comes from the history of the church from LDS sources, okay? Don't try and go there. Question, was Joseph Smith prone to boasting? Absolutely, absolutely. Did Joseph Smith believe that he was better than Jesus Christ? That's what he said. Did Joseph Smith say that he would be a second Muhammad threatening to spread his beliefs with the sword? 
I have no idea. I didn't even talk about that. And so uh, maybe that's something to jump into in the future. But um, anybody who watches the video where I talked about it, it wasn't just Joseph's quote. This was quotes from Brigham Young, Joseph Smith, John Taylor, you know, all sorts of different LDS and even a couple of other non-LDS sources. They were all direct quotes involving they, them believing that G, Jesus and Joseph are inseparable and that... Um, and that Joseph Smith was sinless. Joseph Smith claimed to be sinless. He flat out lied about his polygamy and his lack of his practice thereof. I mean, I, just go back and watch the video I, and just tell me that don't try and just isolate one particular quote and try and give me a reason why I was wrong about that one particular quote because that's just kind of ridiculous. Anyway, um, now, let's see, I was going to talk about, oh, I got all three, right? Okay, first vision, boasting, martyrdom. So, um, stay tuned for next Q&A video that's going to be coming up soon, and that's going to be having to do with my study and my heart for Mormonism, because there was a lot of comments and questions that challenged that, and you already heard some of them, and the whole anti-Mormon, the typical anti-Mormon, you don't know what you're talking about, you're spreading lies, all that kind of stuff. And so we're going to dive into that next time. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up on today's content if you like the content for today, and share this video with others who are interested in cults and how to reach them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Christ. If there's something that I did not cover in this video, or you have a question about something related to Coles, put it in the comments down below, and I will get to that um, and include some of those in next week's Q&A material. And I do want to let you know that I started a Patreon account, so if you're led to support the channel, then you can jump on the link that's going to be on the end screen, as well as possibly some other places on the channel. And uh, there's different tiers, and you can take a look, and that ranges from just putting you in the front of the line for this weekly Q&A to getting you immediate access to videos that I would schedule to upload otherwise, um, access to the written material that I have, which means that if you subscribe or you pledge at the $10 a month level, then you get a free copy of my book, Sharing Jesus with the Colts, as well as access to all written articles from the past, present, and future. And I'm going to be setting goals. Once we reach $1,000 in pledges, I'm going to be um, starting on my new book, which has to do with comparing all the scriptures that I mentioned and others in that book and all of the groups that have their own translation of scripture to show you how they twist the scriptures and to give you an understanding of where they're coming from and what they believe about certain things and topics. So um, if you want to check that out and if you're led to, go ahead and do that. And until next time, may God's grace be with you.